If your mind is on your money, you may be on the right track to financial freedom, or maybe not. One self-made millionaire says you have to write it all down before you can achieve your goals. Paul D. Jones is the author of Schedule for Success, a guide to help us all do just that. Thank you so much for being with us. Hey, thank you for having me. Schedule for Success. That's right. Why write that book? What does that mean, schedule for success? Well, once you have so many people want to call you up and say, hey, I want to sit down and pick your brain. Can I buy you lunch? Can I buy you dinner, et cetera, et cetera? Then you, you really hear the questions that they're asking. And they all are saying, this is what I want in life, but how to get there. Mm -hmm. And when I would, you know, really, it's almost like doing an audit. You would look at them and say, well, let me audit what you're working with now. And once you realize, it's like they have no schedule that actually matches the things that they said that they would desire out of life. So, and that schedule is not necessarily, I'm doing this at 5, I'm doing this at 10, I'm doing, that's not what we're really talking no, about. No, this, this, this whole book is really scheduling. It's more the spiritual values of, of success, also of a schedule. Because if you don't have the right mental foundation, if you don't have the right person relationship, so whereas a lot of people look at it as just a money base, mm -hmm. but you know, money comes last. If you have your personal relationships right, if you have your health right, you have your personal network right, you're doing all those personal things of, of enriching your own mind, you have to schedule time for all of that. Because if you don't do that, you won't increase your own self-worth. And if you don't increase your own self-worth, you'll never have a net worth. So in other words, you're sort of working toward and preparing yourself for that success. Exactly. You, you look at what life is throwing at you now, but you have one thing up your sleeve. You know what you want tomorrow to look like. So mm -hmm. therefore, every day you may say, okay, at this time I have to be at work. They tell me when to take a break. They tell me when to take a lunch break. That's someone else having a schedule. Mm -hmm. We never really look at it that way. So now we're saying, okay, that schedule, now you have to Megan, to say this is your schedule that works for you because that's your successful part of the day to take care of the basic bills because the average person, the stats show, are, are living paycheck to paycheck. If they go less than two weeks without mm -hmm. a check, they're done. Yeah. So therefore, when you look at that, you say, okay, this right here, this schedule, my main schedule maintains me. That schedule for life. Right. Now, what, what do you want the future to look like? And why is it so important for people to write that down in front of them? I mean, I can keep it in my head, but you're saying, no, you should want to see it in front of you. If you don't write it down, you're going to forget. You're going to procrastinate. You're going to make excuses. And it's going to be, you know, when you put something on a... On, on a piece of paper and you say you know what I'm gonna make a purpose to look at this on this piece of paper mm -hmm. every day then now you're giving yourself an some a value or order so anything that's not functioning in order is out of order so I don't know if you've been to a vending machine and put your money in there mm -hmm. and it didn't give you the prize back because <laughs> they didn't put the out of order sign on there so you had a problem with that machine <laughs> you want to shake it and all that right uh -huh. so many of us are functioning and not putting the things in order so therefore we want the prize but the machine in our life is out of order mm -hmm. so we have to put things back in order and how to do that is to understand all the basic mechanics of your life or where you want to be. So for me, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to say, you know, a year and a half ago, I was almost 100 pounds heavier. Mm -hmm. So I would have broke this chair when I sat down in it. But I scheduled what I was going to eat. I got to understand nutritional values more. I got to understand what working out really meant. So therefore, although it hurt, and it hurt so bad, <laughs> you know, I kept going and I kept mm -hmm. going. But you know, I bought some shirts. It's funny, my wife used to pick on me and she, say, hey, you're not going to wear these shirts. You need to take them back because she's the type of person that if it's sitting there too long, she's going to take it back. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, you leave my stuff alone. You're working you toward know, that. Man, I put them shirts on one day. And I walked off in that kitchen. I was like a fashion model. I was like, look at here now. My daughter's laughing at me. I'm like, look at me. It fit. And I got room, baby. I got room. When before, it wouldn't even butter. But and so no. you scheduled your success I for that way. I scheduled loss. that success. How receptive are people to that idea? I, I, sometimes I find that people say they want it, mm -hmm. but then when they find out what it takes to get it, Oh, it ain't so attractive well, that, anymore. That's what separates those who really want it and those who are just talking because you have a lot of people who are the get-along gang. You know, they just want to get along to get through the day. But when it boils down to it, if you say you want a nice car, 
-hmm. You know, you just say, okay, great. Now, what are you doing to get it? You know, so scheduling for good credit then. If you can't go pay cash and you schedule for good credit, you schedule your daily budget tracking, you schedule all of those other mechanics in place so that you can do everything you want. So you don't have to look at something and gawk at someone else saying, oh, that's nice. You can look at it and say, one day yeah. I'm going to have that. It may not be in my budget now. So I teach people, as my first book, Who Told You You Were Broke? I teach mm -hmm. people, don't say you're broke. It's just not in your budget right now. And that's been many things in my life that I still to this day would like to have. Mm -hmm. You know, like getting in the airport and you got to get there early. It's like, now I need my own jet now. You know, <laughs> so some can see okay. that. But I realize that I still have to go get in that line. So mm -hmm. I have to schedule to be there on time. And if I don't get on that plane, like I was talking to the young lady in the back, if I don't get on that plane, that's my fault. It's not the airline's fault yeah. because they tell me, go ahead. Now, you also, one of the things I noticed in your book is that you included quite a few quotes from the Bible, and you mentioned a few minutes ago Absolutely. about being spiritually grounded. Um, how is that received by people? I, I, I can tell that's part of mm -hmm. your philosophy of life, your yes. philosophy of success. Uh, do many people relate to that? I think everyone recognizes truth and realness. So it doesn't matter what their background has been when I speak to them, because I'm not speaking to them in a form of, of, of saying, this is what you need to do or your life isn't going to work. I'm telling them, I know the truth. I know what's going to help you get your life to work. And I know that someone loves you, even if you don't recognize the love that you're loved by. You're loved by. Mm -hmm. So I know I'm loved, so therefore you lead with love. And when you get the basic truth and the foundation that says, you know what, you actually really can't do this. You just have to be willing to pay the price. Yeah. This book is saying, here's the spiritual values, here's the stepping stones, this is what you should do. Go on ahead, pay the price, and once you go ahead and stick to that schedule and make it out, you're going to go through some stuff, but that's why the word says, difficult is the way that leads to life, but there are few who finds it. Well, I'm going to take that difficult route, and I'm going to live a great <laughs> life. Okay, and when we come back, we are going to find out how you made some of your financial success, as well as how important relationships are uh, to being connected to your dreams and your money, and I think there's a connection kit you're going to tell us about, yeah. all right? So stay with me.